This is the 10K a month formula blueprint simplified. And I'll be honest with you guys, we've probably heard so many times people talk about how to get to your first 10K a month plus yada, yada, yada. And it's true. I think nowadays, especially with the economy, the creator's economy, social media, the internet, it's a lot simpler to create those 10K plus months. And here's the biggest bottleneck in a lot of people's businesses and why they don't even get started or what's stopping people and why do people quit? Here, mindset. A lot of your mindset is really on how you see yourself, how we see the world, our views on the world, and also how we think other people see us. These are things that dictate our everyday move. And I believe the mindset is really, really big because if we can't take control of this, if we can't overcome fears, anxieties, doubt, past childhood traumas, insecurities, fears. A lot of this stuff is what stops people from getting started. And I really need to share that with you guys before I get into the practical. You know, there's a saying that says 80% mindset, 20% how to's. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you guys a lot of this how to's, but I'm really big on the mindset and I see why a lot of people fail. It's a lot easier to get ahead nowadays because not too many people are trying to get ahead. This is why I tell people the competition isn't that much of a competition when you have a mindset that is second to none and you know who you are. You know how to move in the marketplace with confidence, with boldness. And yes, there's going to be a lot of risk. There's going to be a lot of experimenting. There's going to be a few failures down the road and some bumps, right? And some what might look like as walls, as problems and challenges. But it's not how the world affects us. It's how we respond to how the world affects us. It's how we respond to situations, to challenges. And this is what allows a lot of people to be successful in business, in the online game, in just life in general. And me growing up, I was never in this creative problem solving move. I, I had to get into this, you know, in into different environments that allowed me to become a creative problem solver. A creative problem solver, a lot of the most successful companies led by successful people are they know how to lead in the midst of pressure. They know how to move when pressure comes at them. And when there's trials, there's fires, there's challenges and problems. Us, once you start to grow in your business, the business, a lot of the business that, you know, that is that is successful and a lot of the challenges and problems that even arise in the business dictates to the person that's running it, that owns it pretty much until you have the right systems. But when you're starting off, I believe a lot of the problems in the business isn't a problem that's in the business. It's a personal problem that manifests in your business. I just have to share with that because it's really been on my heart why a lot of people fail and why they doubt and why they don't, they don't even get started. It's like, yo, you've been seeing all these people online successful, you've been seeing it, but 10K a month is pretty much the new normal. It's like working $8 an hour was the normal at one point, $10 an hour. 10K a month is starting to become the new normal to those that step into the online space, learn these skills, the skills I'm about to share with you, this simple blueprint and roadmap. And this is a lot of stuff that I'm gonna be sharing on this channel, just straight up raw strategies, tactics, but it starts with the mind. If you don't have a mind that can overcome the barriers, maybe the laziness, the doubt, the fear, the imposter syndrome that might be creeping on you day to day. And you know why I can relate? I've gone through this and I go through this stuff a lot. It's part of who you are in the process. And what I love about growing a business is not the money. And here's the thing, if you're going to be focusing on the money, you're going to quit early in the game. It has to be something greater. It has to be something deeper inside of you that's wanting to start the business, that's wanting to grow it. It's about the person you become. When it starts to become about the person that you become in the process, the money, even though you have some bad days because there's going to be some days, some months that is just not going to be hot. One month you're making 30K, the next month you're making 3K. It always fluctuates in entrepreneurship and in business. It's how you learn through the process and if you're willing to still show up even when it doesn't feel good, even when you feel like you're failing and you're not hitting the, the, the KPIs that you're looking to hit on a month-to-month -month basis. But once you can be able to develop your mind 
watch the business change. Now let's shortly just and quickly just talk about this three-step process on how to create a 10K a month business. Number one is what is the service that you will be selling? I'm a big believer about agencies and not just marketing agencies. Right now, marketing agency, I believe, is the simplest business model to start because of low barrier of entry. You don't really need any money up front, but you do need to build skills. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to be able to service your clients and to be able to fulfill on the needs that you are promising them. So what is the skill that you're either willing to learn or willing to outsource? If you're just a beginner, I just start to learn the skill, at least get to know the skill and start to become a little bit better each day. And I'm not saying wait a whole you know, couple months or, or years before you start selling the service. Get familiar. We live in a society where you can learn these skills pretty quick make the process simple and to start to slowly take action on the skills. And like I said, there's so many ways to do it and there's so many skills out there. If you guys wanna have a skill, a niche, I have a niche list, it's my, it's part of my email newsletter. Go ahead and opt in and just grab it. You'll get all the different industries, the niches, and the services that you can service those people in those niches. And just a couple example right now, Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads. You can also do email email marketing, right? Email copywriting. You can learn that as a skill. SMS uh, marketing as well. And there's so many. Like I said, you can even do TikTok ads. You, there's a lot of like TikTok agencies that are now growing up, or you know, kind of going up in the space nowadays. You can also do like TikTok video brand creation virality, like a TikTok video viral agency where all you're doing is creating three pieces of content a day and you're literally on, on the talk and creating that for brands and making their videos go viral. There's so many things that you can do and you can literally look up how to create a video or how to go viral on TikTok and you'll see so many different trainings and now you can try those out for brands. This is where you start to really just look at a service that you can start to sell, think something that you may be interested in to learn, and really try to at least get the foundation before you go out there and start hiring experts to get better. All you need to know is a little bit more than the person that's in need of the service and you got a skill that you could offer that somebody needs anyways. People would rather, I know most companies, they'd rather hire people that know their craft or know at least a little bit of it than having to train them from the ground up. So just to recap, like I said, Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, TikTok ads, you could do email marketing, email copywriting, SMS marketing, you know, text message marketing, and you could also do even lead generation, okay? Like I said, there's so many different paths where you could do like client acquisition where you help people get clients, land them, send out whatever you gotta do to get clients for that specific company that you wanna be working for and creating systems around that. So this is a powerful service or skill to have and, there's, and they're all good. They're all good skills to have in this next decade. So one is find out a skill that you might know. And like I said, it might not be in the marketing space. You might be absolutely great at so many other things. You could be good at teaching people how to resell sneakers. You could be good at learning stocks and knowing stocks. You could talk, talk about crypto. You could talk about the, the ins and outs of e-commerce and, and the ability to increase the AOV, which is the average order value and consult on that. There's so much stuff that you can do outside of, like I said, just the marketing space, but these are all great skills to have. I would choose one, get good at it, at least familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with it, and then we're gonna take on to the next step, which is getting clients. Being able to get clients is the lifeblood of any business, right? I think money is the lifeblood because you need cash flow in order to grow, in order to sustain, pay your team, pay for the softwares, tools, and to just make it worth your time, right? It's, it's about that payment. So here are a few different ways, a different methods that you can do it. And I'll probably do a video dropping a little bit more on this and how to do this, but I wanna be able to share with you guys just a few of the different ways on how to get clients. You guys can go out and you can start doing like cold outreach, right? Cold outreach through LinkedIn, through different platforms. You can even do emails, cold emails, cold emailing. There's so many different videos on how to do that, how to warm up the domain and how to start sending out cold emails. You can even do cold calls if you like. Cold calls still work even nowadays. And part of that cold, cold calling as well, which is the new way of cold calling, which is 
cold DMs, direct messaging, whether that's on Instagram, whether that's on TikTok, that can be on LinkedIn. You can do LinkedIn outreach and know how to connect with people and land clients on LinkedIn. There's so many ways to outreach and the cold method, and when I say cold, it means they don't know you. Warm or hot means, hey, they might know about you or you're building a relationship, but cold is coming out of nowhere. They have no idea who you are. And it might not be the funnest, okay? This is why I said at the beginning, it's a mindset thing. It's a mindset thing. It's uh, maybe it might be imposter syndrome, and that's why you're not typing and you're not you're not going out there and reaching out because you have some doubt creeping in. Once you can overcome that, no matter how you feel, you're gonna continue to do the work and watch this grow and watch you, yourself land a client here in the next few days, few weeks, next month or so. It all really depends. But I think being able to reach out on all these different platforms, you can even do IG stories. This is how I sell IG stories, Facebook stories. You can go into other Facebook groups with like-minded people and drop some information. This is called content marketing. You can go onto TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, just like this. So many ways to be able to get clients to get them to know what it is you do and why why they would, should even trust you and all this stuff. There's so many different ways to be able to do it. Number two is getting clients. I would choose one channel, one of these methods. One of my main ways has been Facebook groups. I have a video on my channel about Facebook groups and how to go in, reach out, and how I've gotten clients as well. So you guys can check out those case studies. Facebook is probably a hot place. TikTok uh, content marketing is another great, great space to be just because of the organic reach. So many ways to get clients. Choose a channel, choose a method, and just hone in all your energy on learning that channel. So you learned one skill, you learned a channel where most of your ideal clients would be, and you're going all out on that channel to get a client. So we talked about getting your service. We talked about being able to get a, uh, uh, so we talked about honing in on a skill, a service, right? Crafting a service, finding a service. Now it's about your sales. How are you going to get sales? What channels? Where can you go? And I've kind of shared quite a few. Don't take this information lightly. This is what everybody evaluates. This is such a simple concept. So I just show you all the different channels that you guys can go on to get a sale, right? To find the sales, to find your ideal client. And then the last thing is fulfillment. The ability to actually fulfill your client's needs and actually the service that you sold. So you're gonna be focusing on that. You're gonna be focusing on fulfilling for your clients. And there's ways around it where you'd only be working possibly a couple hours a day. Maybe a lot of work up front, but once you got it up and running and it's producing results, it's producing what you promised it, there it is. That's for one client. Then you stack another, stack another. This is how you keep continue to go through this barrier, this, this system, this flow. And here's another thing about the fulfillment process is you're not going to be focusing all your day on fulfillment unless you're stacked and you don't have people around you to help you and you have way more than five clients, okay? You should still be uh, focusing on step two, which is sales. So after you're fulfilling and once you've figured out that whole fulfillment process, you only should be working a couple hours on fulfilling, checking in on your clients, seeing how they're doing, sharing, sharing them KPIs, what's, what's working, what's not, how you can improve. These are things where you're actually building a relationship with your clients and showing them that you actually care. And a majority of my day, part of the fulfillment process, I would focus Personally, I'd focus 80% of my time on number two, which is getting sales, going through all these channels, mastering that, and the other 20% on fulfilling for my clients. Some days it might be 60-40, 70-30. It might even be half-half if you got big deadlines and big projects, but you should always be focusing on getting new clients. And this is a mistake I made. This is really, really big mistake I made where I focused all my weeks and days on fulfilling for clients. Next thing you know, you dropped half your clients maybe the next month, it's never predictable. Even if we got good results, they take our results and be like, all right, we're running with this, we don't need you anymore, and I've had that. I've gone through that stuff and I've dedicated and pushed everything I could and I had to learn through it. But this is the simple formula on being able to get to 10K plus a month, focusing on the right things every day, Majority of your day should be focused on number two. So after you've got your skill set, right? Like I think sharpening your skill set is kind of like afterwards where, you know, learning about your skill once you've actually established what the service or skill is. I'd learn on like weekends instead of watching Netflix, I do it with YouTube University on the skill. The weekends, late at nights, after you're done doing your work day, these are the things you want to sharpen outside of the time when you should be reaching out all throughout the day. 
and this is the flow. This is the flow of having consistent 10K months is focusing on number two, which is getting clients, content marketing, reaching out, reaching out, talking to new people every day. And the last part about it is being able to fulfill. And if you can get that and you have a product that is great, you're gonna produce testimonies. Those testimonies will allow it easier for you to be able to sell people on your service when you're reaching out. Didn't wanna make this too long, but hopefully this made sense. Uh, what I learned is going back to the basics. I got to this point where when I was making over 10K, I started doing all this complicated stuff, 10K a month, all this complicated stuff where I was focusing on systems and boom and this and long term and I just stopped focusing on what made me 10K in the first place. And this is what allows us to keep going, keep growing, keep being consistent so we can grow, we can build, we can hire other people, we can allow other people to get out of environments they don't want to be out of, be in and house them, be, be able to take care of them and their family. And this is where we start to, once, once I got to like 20, 30K a month, I stopped doing the things that got me to 10K. And this was a mistake I made, going back to the basics, building off the right foundation. And this is a simple, literally blueprint, how anybody can do this. The question is, is your mind right? And once your mind's right, then you can go ahead and go out there into the marketplace, share your story, share your services, have actual clients you wanna work with, learn who the type of clients you wanna work with, and take all those profits and invest it into things long-term so you can become an investor. If you guys enjoyed this stuff, tap the like. Hopefully, if you guys had any questions, like I said, down below is my email newsletter where you get my free niche list. I have a ton of different services, ton, ton of different niches that you guys can use, hone into, and if you enjoy that stuff, feel free to comment below, let me know, and get all the updates through being part of my email list. You guys have a great rest of your week. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.